Microbes are everywhere. Every surface around you, including your skin, is teeming with them. Most of them are pretty chill, but some of them are uh, not so good for you. And I hate to tell you this, but disinfectants lose their potency way faster than you think, pretty much once they're dry. You really do have to reapply them every single time someone touches a surface, or worse, sneezes on it. But what if you could keep those surfaces disinfected by cleaning just once every 24 hours? That's what next-gen cleaners will do, and that should make anyone's inner clean freak a little happier. You likely have a bunch of different cleaners at home. Disinfectants in the bathroom, grease cutters in the kitchen, foaming hand soap by the sink. Each of these work a little differently, but their goal is the same. Clean all the stuff you can see, but also clean what you can't see. Bacteria and viruses, like the COVID-19 virus, by ripping apart their protective membranes, causing them to spill their guts and die. Chemically, bacterial membranes and viral envelopes are part hydrophobic and part hydrophilic. Soap made with things like sodium laurate is also part hydrophobic and part hydrophilic, which is why it's so good at its job. Its molecules sneak in between the molecules of those membranes, tearing them open, chemically speaking. Side note here. Have you ever noticed how a cleaner will say that it kills 99.9% .9 of all bacteria? Or that some use the word sanitize while others say that they disinfect? These terms are highly regulated and carefully measured by the EPA. Cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, how do they differ? Cleaning is uh, cleaning a surface from soil. There is no disinfection or sanitization when you clean. The difference between sanitization and disinfection is the level of how many bacteria or virus you can kill. To determine if your formulation qualifies as a sanitizer or a disinfectant, according to the EPA, you smear a surface with millions of bacteria or viruses and then measure exactly how many your formulation kills. 99.9% .9 is a sanitization level. Disinfection level is higher. Sanitizers kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria, but disinfectants are even stronger. They take out both the bacteria and the viruses. And soap isn't the only thing that can do this. Scientists have isolated and created lots of disinfectant molecules. One that's common in medical and commercial settings, and even in many of the products in your own home, is known as a quat. Quat is short for quaternary ammonium compound. They're composed of a central nitrogen atom surrounded by four functional groups, usually alkyl or aryl groups, abbreviated as R like the benzyl group, methyl group, and alkyl chain in this one, benzyl conium chloride. Quats take a different approach to destroying those bacteria. They're cationic, meaning they're positively charged. That positive charge lets them bind to the surface of most bacterial membranes and viral envelopes, which have a slight negative charge. By binding to the membrane, the quat also pokes holes in its structure, which eventually makes it fall apart. Those charges can also disrupt the work of proteins and lipids inside the cell or virus. Now, the thing about all antimicrobials is they're really only useful for a limited time. You spray them on, they kill what's there. But once the surface dries, it can be reinfected all over again. After you touch the surface, after there is some contact on the surface or recontamination on the surface, they're not working anymore. So how do we extend that window? The answer is with polymers. Those long repeating molecular chains can help us to move from just cleaning a surface to keeping it clean. New disinfectants do this by mixing an antimicrobial quad with a polymer. So when you spray it on a surface, this formula sets in a film only nanometers thick. Layers and layers of polymer surround the antimicrobial quats and push them to the surface to kill bacteria and viruses. As some of the quats are rubbed away, more rise to the top, keeping the surface protected. Even if you touch, there will be interaction between the quat and the polymer, so it will be dispersed on the surface and still be available. The formula works because of a complex interaction of charges. Some parts of the polymer have a positive charge, some negative, and some have no charge. This means that different parts of the polymer can stick to different parts of the surface and stay there. Sounds great, but the EPA who regulates these kinds of products needs proof. The test goes like this. First, the scientists apply the polymer quat formula to a surface. Then they deliberately coat that surface with bacteria and viruses. Next comes the abrasion testing. 
Using one kilogram of pressure, about the weight of a one liter soda bottle, scientists rub the surface up and down four times with a damp cloth. Then they reinfect the surface and rub it down again. And they do this 12 times over the course of 24 hours. After all that, if more than 99.9% .9 of the bacteria and viruses are dead, the disinfectant is doing its job. Now this general idea of mixing quats and polymers for disinfectants isn't new, but older formulations left surfaces feeling sticky, streaky, and less than clean. And clean really is about more than just being microbe free. The product was sticky on the surface. You can touch the surface and feel it. So the scientists worked to create a disinfectant that would be undetectable to the touch. The one they came up with dries into a layer that's 200 times thinner than the ridges of your fingerprints way too thin for us to notice. Another EPA rule is that the formulation needs to work on lots of different surfaces. What's the perfect testing ground with lots of kinds of surfaces that really need to be clean? An airplane. There is a standard test in US, so it's the Boeing test, when you need to make sure that the disinfectant you will use will be compatible with all the surfaces in the airplane. Plastics, metals, aluminum, whatever. Amazingly, one of the drawbacks of these long-lasting products is that they work too well. In an airplane or a hotel, many of us are actually reassured by watching someone wipe down a tray table or clean a surface. It's been called hygiene theater. You and me, we want to see people cleaning around us. You want to make sure that, okay, I see they're cleaning here. But if we move towards a future where all of our surfaces, from our home counters to the airplane tray table, are always protected, maybe we can all become a little more confident. Until then, I might still bring my own package of wipes. What keeps you passionate about your job? Working to protect people, to save people from infection. And it's uh, asking more how we can continue to progress science and innovation. <laughs>